praise the Lord. Uh, Sandra Bayungana here from the Road to Redemption Ministries. I hope you watched my previous video. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's the Road to Redemption. Uh, the um, Instagram account is Road to Redemption 2. The Facebook account is moving from being rejected in a relationship to being happy thereafter. And we also have a WhatsApp group where, we, where I speak to men and women every day. Yes, you can join us on the WhatsApp group by inboxing me and request for the link. Yes, it, the number is 0703. That is plus 25. Are you going to number plus 256? 703-95-79-66. Yeah, you'll be able to get a link that admits you to the WhatsApp group. We'll be glad to serve you. Be blessed. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I want to say thank you for today. Thank you for the grace you've given me to speak unto your people. I pray that you use me as a vessel to minister unto your people, that the significance of your word will be mastered in their lives and they'll use your word to heal their pain, to take them out of depression and to, to give them reassurance in you that there is nothing impossible with you, God. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help me discern through your word for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Yes, today I come with a very, very, very inspiring theme. And the, the title to my message is, Nevertheless, I Live, as in L-I-V-E, Nevertheless, I Live. Why? Why? Why am I coming up with this? Because most of my messages are inspired from what I see on the WhatsApp platform and what I see people go through. So it kind of gives me what I should actually speak to the people because it's, it's a common problem. And from what I've been seeing of recent is that people are holding on to things, to baggages that they are supposed to actually let go of. And there is a season of holding on to something and there is a season of, of releasing. And releasing is for your own good. Each time you hold on to something and you don't want to let go, that is like a comfort zone. You cannot move out of that comfort zone to something better. So at times, you need to let go for you to go ahead. What am I talking about? Today, I'm speaking to a man or woman out there that has been nursing a heartbreak and you're finding it hard to let go because she broke your heart, because he broke your heart. You're finding it hard to let go. You're still in pain. It's five years down the road, but you're still in pain. You, you still remember him and you're like, I wish, I wish. I could be speaking to someone who was, whose marriage never worked out. And for some reason, you haven't moved on. The man actually moved on or the woman actually moved on. And they, they got some other people to, to marry or to be with. And for you, you're still wallowing in pain. You're on their social media platforms trying to, to follow them and see what they are doing. And each time you see them progressing, you're in tears. You're like, why me? Why did he abandon me? Why sh did she abandon me? And you're downcast, you know? It could be a loss. You could have lost a relative. You could have lost a mother, a father, a husband, a child. And the, the, the pain of losing the child has not disappeared. You're still holding on to the fact that you lost them. And if you're not careful, this kind of pain leads to depression. I, I normally speak to people who tell me, Sandra, I lost my job. But I lost it in the moment when I lost my marriage. Because I was so broken, I couldn't concentrate at work and they fired me. I've seen so many stories of that kind. So depression is real. To the point that if you're not careful, you may lose everything around you. So I'm speaking to someone that is still holding on to a pain, to a disappointment, to something that didn't work out for you. It could be a job. You lost a job and you feel you unfairly lost it. And you're still jobless at this time and you're still holding on to it. And it's, it's pulling you into depression. A, a short story about me. I remember when I was um, impregnated by this ex of mine and he left me pregnant I held on to the relationship 
I forced it to make, I forced myself to make it work because I was afraid of loneliness, because I was afraid of being a single mom, because I was afraid of getting out of the comfort zone, which wasn't even comfortable at all. And the, the energy I used to hold on to the relationship was so much that it would have been better if I used the same energy to pray, to redefine myself, to find myself and to start all over again. So I speak from experience because I've been down that road whereby you hold on to something, you don't want to let it go, and each time it's not working out, you get more frustrated and depressed. So I think it's, a t it's time to let go, you know? And I'm going to share with you from, from three different scriptures, but all leading to the same thing. These situations happen in life. When God was bringing us on earth, he didn't promise us that every day will be a good day. There will be those days whereby things have not worked out your way. There will be that time where a relationship will go sour, but you expected it to be forever. There are those moments when you thought you would hold that baby forever, but then the baby leaves you. There are those moments when you thought they would be there to stay as your friends, as your family, as your relatives, but then they disappear. And you're holding on to it because... You don't know how to live a life without them. There is nothing like, I can't live without you. No. You know why? Because when God was calling you into this world, he called you alone. He never called you with someone else. That's why you say that even when a child is yours and he's your son, you've raised him from childhood to the man that he is. The Bible tells him God commands him to leave his mother and father and go and stay with his wife and the two shall become one. How can you depart from your child? God understood that letting go is very important. And when you look at a son leaving the parents to start a family of his own, yes, to the parents, they feel like they are losing their son. But there is beauty in him letting go of his parents to actually starting a family of his own. Through that step, a generation is created. These parents will get grandchildren. The son will transition from being a mere boy to being a man, a husband, a father. That is growth. Now, if a mother looks, I'm, look, I'm giving it as an example. If a mother looks at that in, in the perspective that I'm losing my son to, to a woman, they will not let go. And these are the cases we are seeing whereby mothers, in-laws have become pains in marriages to these boys. That's why you're seeing mothers, in-laws are failing their own son's marriages because they've failed to let go. And there is a cost of you failing to let go. You will not see the goodness of the land if you do not let go. When God was telling Lot to leave the sinful city, to go and camp somewhere else, he, they told them, don't look behind, go. But the wife looked behind and she turned into a pillar of salt. That was death for her. She lost transitioning from that city to the new land because she looked behind. I'm here to straighten your perspective. You who thinks this is your comfort zone that you don't want to let go. That man has told you, I don't love you, but you're clinging to the man. Even when it's very clear he has married someone else. That woman has told you, I don't love you, and you're still clinging. Even when it's very clear she doesn't love you, you fail to move out of the comfort zone. I've seen people who go to the extreme mile of running mad just because of a heartbreak. So it's that disastrous. I've seen people committing suicide or contemplating committing suicide because they've been abandoned. I think we need to train ourselves to guard our hearts. You cannot control what people do to you, but you can control how you react or get out of those situations. Now, the theme is nevertheless I live. Whatever man has done to you, whatever heartbreak you've gone through, whatever situation that has made you feel this way, nevertheless you live. You move on nevertheless. You get eh? When you look at Ecclesiastes 3, it tells you, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Every activity under the heavens is seasonal. Even if you get married to the right person, 
There is a time when you'll meet them and there is a time when you'll have a happy marriage. But there is a time when they will die and they will depart from you or when you will die and depart from them. So there is a season. It can't be forever. You get. Let's look at a good marriage that maybe you look up to and you're like, wow, I would wish to have such a marriage. Yes, it's good. Yes, you look up to it, but there is a time when those couples meet. There is a time when those couples are going to enjoy their marriage. There is a time when that couple is going to grow. There is a time when one of them will die and leave the other, and a time when the other will also die and they will all disappear from the face of the earth. Are you seeing that example? You get. So there is a time for everything. So the same way there is a time for such an, an example, there is also a time for you to be in a relationship and it doesn't work out and you get out. There is a time when you'll have the best of life and then things fall apart. It is seasonal. But then, no situation is permanent. You transition from one situation to another. You get yeah? So I have a lady I talked to some time back and she told me she has been single, a single mom for, for 12 years. And she was telling me, I was telling her, haven't you found someone to marry? She's like, no, I'm still waiting for my husband. I'm like, where did your husband go? She told me, my husband abandoned me 12 years ago with my kids. They were very young. So he abandoned me and married another woman. But he's my husband. So I still, I'm still waiting for him to come back. The man she's waiting to come back He's moved on, he's having another family, he divorced her, but she is still waiting. I'm not saying it's, you, you give up and let it go, but there is when you see it evident that it's time to refrain and move on. Should you fail to understand the seasons, you're going to miss out on something next. So the season of breaking up is a transition that you have to go through and then get into another phase. Should you get stuck in the phase of break, being, being heartbroken? you will not be able to, tr to be transitioned into the other, uh, the other stage, which is of moving from one step to the other. When you look at a, a, a Ecclesiastes 3, it's telling you there is a time to be born and a time to die. Like I told you, we are here. There is when our mothers were pushing us in those labor wards, when they wanted us to badly to come out of that womb. And then we went out. Now we came out, we grew we are here today and there will be a time we will die. So we are living our seasons on earth. You know, there is a time to plant and a time to uproot. There is a time you planted that love with all your best. There is a time you gave that job all your best. There is a time you gave it all your best, but there is a time to uproot, to uproot your effort, to uproot your love. Yes, you gave in your love a hundred percent, but they threw it back at you. Yes, get it and uproot it out and move ahead. Hmm? There is a time to tear down and a time to build. There is when he left you and now you're tearing down. You're broken, you're crying, you feel like committing suicide. But after the tearing down, the Bible is telling you there is a time to build. So you have to look at the fact that you can actually build yourself out of that brokenness. Don't accept to stay in the brokenness, you know? There is a time to weep and a time to laugh. Right now you're weeping, you're like, oh my God, how could he abandon me? How could she abandon me? How can I lose my son? You're crying, but there will be a time to smile, to laugh. Why? Because no situation is permanent. You will actually get out of that situation at a particular point. But how you move from the crying moment to the moment of laughing matters a lot. You have to let go of the crying moment for you to observe the laughing moment. You know? A time to mourn and a time to dance. You could be mourning your marriage. You could be mourning your child. You could be mourning your relationship that lasted eight years and now it's gone. You could be mourning the friends you've lost. But let me tell you, if you accept transition to let go of, of this step of, 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 um, of mourning to a step, you're going to get into a step of dancing. But you can't do both stages at the same time. 
you have to let go of one stage to the other, the same way you're moving. If you stand here like this, you'll be here the whole day. But if you want to go somewhere, you'll have to take steps and get out of that position for you to get into the promised land. You get eh? um, a time to embrace and a time. No, a time to scatter. No, sorry. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. There is when you embraced that relationship. There is when you embraced that marriage. There is when you embraced that child. Until time came and they disappeared from you and now you're alone. You don't know how to live alone. My dear, you have to learn to refrain from the embracing. That son you, you once loved is now a big man. He has to get married. God commands him to leave you and go start a family of his own. So you can't keep holding on to your son to the point that you're ruining his marriage because you're being so protective as a mother. You have to let go because there was a stone of raising him. The season is gone. Now he's a man. He has to raise himself because he's a man. Yes, you embraced that relationship for six years. It's gone. The season of embracing it is gone. Can we wait upon God for the next season? You know? A time to search and a time to give up. You were searching for answers. Why? But why? Why did he leave me? Why did my son die? Why did my child die? Why did I get a miscarriage? Yes, there is a time for the why. By the time when you give up and you're like, oh God, I leave it all to you. You know better. If you don't give up and leave it to God, you run mad. Hmm? I will not go deep. But I've brought out the concept of what I want to show you that there is a time for everything. So as you're dealing with a heartbreak today, it is a time of dealing with a heartbreak. But if you learn to transition out of the heartbreak phase, and move out of it, you'll get into the phase where you meet someone else. You cannot think to meet someone else if you're still holding on to your ex. You cannot think of, hold, of giving back to another baby if you're still mourning the other one. You know? You cannot let your child have a successful marriage if you're still holding on to him because you think you're the mother. You know? Why is it seasonal? Why do I tell you that you have to let go? Because God brings these seasons for a reason. There was when you were a baby. There was when you were in primary school. There was when you were in secondary. There was when you were in the university. There is when you got a job and you were single. There is when you got married. And now you're through something now. The same way you went through all the other transitions from being single to being married, from being in secondary to being in university, is the same way you're going to transition out of the situation you're going through now. So quit holding on. Why? Because Isaiah 43 verse 18 to 19 is saying, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. God wants you to forget the former things and look into the future. You cannot get to know what is in the future until you get out of the comfort zone. You cannot know what is in this place until you take two steps and get here. So yes, you've been heartbroken. Yes, you've lost, lost something precious. Yes, you're in pain over something you lost. But after the crying, after the pain, after the, the self-pity, you're supposed to take steps and get out of that. Why? Isaiah 43, 18 to 19 is telling you, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. Why? He's saying in verse 19, see, I'm doing a new thing. God has another plan. You're bigger than where you're stationed. There is greatness in you if you choose to leave this place to the other. It cannot be all, let me tell you, the Bible says God directed us, directs our steps and planned every single day of our lives. So if you knew you'd be single now, there's a time of being married. Because he called you to, to multiply, how will you multiply without being married? So he knows you need a husband. So yes, you're heartbroken. Yes, you feel you're still single. Yes, 
you're finding it hard to let go because this man wasted your entire 20 years. And now you, you feel as if you're at 50 and you don't know what to do. There was a time for wasting time, but there is a time when he will restore that lost time if you get out of that pity and say, Father, I want you to recover back whatever the locust stole from me in my youthful days. You get it. So he says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God wants you to lift your eyes off your situation. God wants you to lift your eyes off the brokenness. God wants you to lift the eyes off that divorce. God wants you to lift your eyes off that situation where you lost a child, where you got a miscarriage, and lift them unto him. Why? Because that season is there. But there is a new season he has for you. Because he's telling you, do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. You have to have the faith. You have to have the courage to say, I'm transitioning from the wilderness. You know? I'm transitioning from where I am out of the wilderness because God is saying he is going to make a way in the wilderness. He's going to make streams in the wastelands. God wants you to lift your eyes off that situation. God wants you to let go. If you don't let go, you will not see the future. If you don't let go, you will not know the plans he has next for you. If you will not let go, you will not understand that you can actually conceive again. If you don't let go, you, you will not actually understand that he wasn't a suitable one. So you need to let go and you're like, Father, what next? God never runs out of options. When you look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, it says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do is forgetting what is behind and straining towards what's ahead. You know? Yes, you have not gotten hold of what you want, but you're being advised that much as you haven't yet gotten what you desire, Forget what is behind, stretch towards what is ahead. There is always something ahead. Ahead is ahead. I've told you, if I'm in this place, to get to the next step, I have to take a step. So there is something beautiful ahead that you will not see if you're still holding on to something. You get? So it's telling you, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Verse 14 says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize of which God has called me heavenward in Christ. You're supposed to reach the finishing line. And let me tell you, the enemy would want you to stay in that season without getting out because he doesn't want to see you testify. Because he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So be wise enough. Lift your eyes off the heartbreak. Lift your eyes off what you lost. And say, Father, I let go. Yes, I was abandoned. I let go. Yes, I was disappointed on the altar. I let go. Yes, I was rejected. I let go. Yes, this man wasted my entire youth. I let go. Yes, I gave my best to that marriage. I even built a house. But this man put another woman in this house. I let go. Do you know why you have to let go? Because your father is very rich. He is not limited by this season. He's a God who makes season after season. There is a season for winter and a season for summer. So the winter is here, but there is a season for summer. Yes, there is a season to cry, but there will be a season to laugh. There is a season to be rejected and a season to be accepted. That's why he tells you, that I will raise, I will set a table for you before your enemies. By the time he's telling you that I will set a table for you before your enemies, it means there was a season when your enemies were trampling over you, when the naysayers were laughing at you. But there will be a season when he will put a table before your enemies and show himself as God above everything. When I was a single mom, I used to get a lot of people talking negative to me, and I used to feel bad. That season was there. But now it's season for me to shine, to stand up again, to put my head up high. They no longer talk. 
that season was done. It transitioned into me finally finding true love. So God is not limited. When that man abandoned me, I felt I don't exist. I felt I should die. There is a moment I contemplated suicide. I'm like, how can I be like this? There is when I was in the labor pains alone and there was no one like someone to love me, to encourage me, and it was painful. And I felt like, oh, well, I should just die. Should I, can, I wish I can die while putting to, to birth so that me and my baby can get rid of this pain of the world. That was a season. But God had a better plan. But for me to get into the plan that God had for me, I had to let go of that man. I had to let go of whatever that love stood for. I had to let go of the six and a half years I'd invested in that relationship and look ahead. I had to perceive what God has to do ahead because he had promised. So I kept telling him, Father, in Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19, you tell me to forget the former things. You tell me not to dwell in the past. You tell me to lift my eyes and see, for you are about to do a, to do a new thing. Father, I'm lifting my eyes off this man, back unto you. I'm waiting to see how the springs are going to spring up. I'm waiting to see how you're moving me out of the wilderness. I'm waiting to see how the streams will be formed out of this wasteland called single motherhood. I'm looking ahead. I let go. I've been holding on to this love. I've been crying to this man to take me back in. I've been crying to him to come and be the father to my child because it is so scary mothering a child without a father. It was painful. But much as it was painful, much as I didn't know what the future held, I had to take a step of faith and say, you know what, Lord, I'm letting go. I'm letting go of this thing I call a comfort zone. I'm letting go of this thing I call a relationship. I'm letting go of this thing I think is good. Because I've given it all my best, has failed to work out. Will I kill myself? No. So I look ahead. I'm trying to perceive what you say that you're yet to do a new thing. Father, I await to see the new thing you're about to do. And let me tell you, in the due time, God made me perceive. I didn't even perceive. I saw it. So years down the road, I was able to walk down the aisle. And I would say, I don't regret every moment. This ministry to stand today, it's because I went through a transition from being rejected, from being a single mom, to being happily married thereafter. This shows that there is a season. But for you to transition into the level God wants you to be, you have to let go. You can't keep holding on. If you hold on, you're limiting him that he cannot be better than what you are. So you're better than that situation. You're better than that comfort zone. There is a lot to see. There is a lot to perceive. There is a lot your hands will touch if only you accept to let go and look ahead for the new thing he is yet to do. So I pray this speaks to someone that is holding on to something that they should let go. I hope you'll get the energy to rise out and look at tomorrow because tomorrow is better. For as long as you still have life, there is hope for tomorrow. Be blessed. Thank you for watching. And please don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms. On Facebook, it's moving from being rejected in a relationship to being happy thereafter. On Instagram is Road to Redemption too, but on YouTube it's the Road to Redemption. So please follow us. And if you find these messages very interesting, please share it with your friends. Share the link, share with your friends and they will not remain the same. Be blessed, thank you so much. Sunday